everyone, welcome back to another tier list. This is going to be for the mid-season patch update 11.6, uh, so season 11, mid-season patch. In this tier list, we're just going to go over what we've done with our other tier lists as well. Uh, we're going to go over bands first, this is mainly for rank conquest. So we're going to go over our bands, we're going to go over who I think is good in the support role, who I think is good in the ADC role, who I think is good in mid, jungle, and solo. And of course, you know, if the character's not banned, then put them in their respective roles, for example, Dusa fantastic adc so okay let's let's get right into this bands medusa absolutely broken op i don't want to hear it this character is number one band for me right now i think that medusa just does way 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 too much damage and even before the update even before the mid-season patch medusa had gotten some slight buffs and some some of her items got buffs too like duality for example uh which she abuses because she's like a bluestone hunter and she was absolutely shredding i was banning her before the update and after the update, let her through a couple games. That was my mistake. I'm sorry for all the loss that Mara caused my teammates. Uh, don't let that character through. Or if you're first picking, you're, you want to play ADC or even mid lane because she's a fantastic flex. You can pick her mid lane or you can pick her ADC. It doesn't matter. Pick her. She's fantastic. She does so much damage. She's my top ban right now for sure. All right, there we go. Uh, next one we have is Kamazots. Kamazots, again, uh, terrorizes the Qs. He, he's been a top band up there for me for the last, like, honestly, couple seasons. Uh, Kama just has really, really high single kill potential, and he has pretty much a get out, two get out of jail free cards. His leap, which is a far iframe, and of course, he has his alt, which he can then blink right afterwards after his alt's done. So he can easily tower dive, kill people, yada, yada, yada. Kama's OP. So Dusa Kama, I think, are my top two bands. One character I think that has actually been getting a lot of a bit more press recently i think in the queues is eshell so after eshell's mini buff she can heal herself and that allows her to pretty much like hard sustain in a fight her and allies essentially that she's hitting and her beam just does so much damage i mean it's it it's just insane so eshell i think is actually a really top band she's got a lot of util she does a ton of damage and she has a lot of sustain uh we all hate healers we've always hated healers i've always hated healers ban eshell Next up, we have Bastet. Bastet's mostly just been an annoyance for me recently. Uh, whenever I play her, that character just pops off. Uh, I could see somebody that I don't really recognize player, and I could see somebody that I do recognize player. And by the way, I play at a Master Grandmaster level queues, for those of you who don't know, so this is mostly for like higher level uh, plays. But Bastet like, just seems to always do work. Even if she loses the game, she seems to always be doing a lot of work. She does a lot of the heavy lifting for the teams, it feels like, a lot of the time. Just giving her both two of the cats as well. She's just been annoying. So overall, I think Bastet's like, definitely worth a ban if these three characters haven't been banned and you're looking for a ban. I think Bastet's definitely worth it. She's really aids to go up against. She's got CC. Uh, and she can just be super, super annoying, especially if you're support and you get hit by a max range Bastet alt late game. Woo, you're toast. So Ares is kind of like a weird one. So Ares is, I think, a good ban if you're like top pick or you have a certain character in mind, like if you're a top pick support uh, and you have a certain character in mind or if you just have a certain character in mind in general, I think Ares is going to be a good pick or good ban for you. And these characters are banned. And the reason why is because Ares is really good at countering characters. Like he counters, shoot, I would say 70 to 80% of the characters in the game because of his chains. His chains are really aids. So if you're a top pick jungler and want to pick Susano, they pick an Ares, your game's kind of over, right? Or if you're a top pick support and you want to pick Kuzumbo or or Artie or Bacchus or Sobek or Fafnir, like you, you see what I'm saying? Like Ares can screw over all these characters. So if you have like a certain character in mind that you want to go, and again, some of these top bands are, are banned. I think Ares is a really good band. Also because I think Ares is like top pick support right now. Um, and I'll get in sports, you know, shortly after bands. But I do think Ares is sort of like a top pick support. And that you can pick him in sort of most situations now. Next up, we have Thor. Thor has always been a band. Don't really have to go over him. Um, character is just AIDS. He can especially one-shot you now. For those of you guys that aren't really too, too familiar with the patch, everybody got weaker. So everybody's like base HP. Their rate at which they get HP per level uh, got nerfed. And same thing with all their prots as well. Everybody's prots got nerfed protections. And same thing with NPCs. NPCs got weaker. So everything got weaker, essentially, including structures, I think, as well. But everything got weaker, which means that characters that have a lot of CC can, well, still one-shot you. I mean, Thor was one-shotting you before the patch late game. Thor can easily one-shot you now. You, you see what I'm saying? And, and we're going to see the same trend with Naja too, right? Like, Thor, Naja. You don't have beads, you're as good as dead. Even if you do have beads, not just going to take out half your HP bar with like a sash, a sash and an auto attack. So um, I think Thor is just, he's always going to be a good ban. He's just always going to be a good ban, right? These characters aren't banned, ban Thor. 
Or these characters are Ben, Ben Thor, maybe. Lastly, we have Charybdis. Charybdis, I don't, I don't really think is too high of a Ben on the Ben's list. Like, she's definitely not going to be better than these characters. However, um, I do think that Charybdis does get a lot of pressure in ADC right now. I think she's actually a pretty top ADC uh, after her changes last patch. And especially going to this one, she's really good at getting early pressure. And she's also a good late game ADC as well. So she actually doesn't, like, really have a point in which she falls off. Uh, so obviously, if you're not going to ban her, like, pick her. Oh, I would pick her. Um, but I do think she is like a ban here and there if you like are playing ADC and you kind of just don't want to go up against that pressure pick. Sort of like if you're a support or frontline and you don't want to go against Ares, that kind of stuff. Um, I do think that Charybdis can be a pretty decent ban. But well, we can also just sort of stick her in the ADC column here as well. Okay, so next up we have supports. So Fafner, I think, is actually really good right now. Fafner feels really strong early. Again, everybody's prots and everything got nerfed. However, things like passives and all that have stayed the same. So Fafner is still getting 35 protections for free from his passive. That's going to make him significantly tankier than most of the supports, especially in the early game when people are still trying to get their items online. So Fafner can do like a lot of crazy stuff. He also has a lot of damage in his kit. I mean, we've seen this uh, time and time again, right, with all his stuns and all his lockdown. I've also made a few videos on Fafner. So he's going to be able to do a lot of damage while still being actually fairly tanky because of that passive. And I think because of that, he still remains a top support for me. Late game, he's going to start falling off a little bit, but he's still going to be able to do a lot of work. Fafner's got a lot of CC in his kit. He's got a lot of debuffs in his kit. He's got a lot of buffs in his kit. So I, I think this character is actually very good. Sobek, honestly, I wasn't really too sure about Sobek at first. I thought maybe Sobek gets a little bit too weak after the nerf because, you know, if he's plucking in there, people might be able to one-shot him a little bit. But to be honest with you, Sobek still feels really fine. And Sobek's the kind of character, I feel like, where you just have to, like, sort of build correctly. Same thing with Bacchus, too. But, like, Sobek, you have to build percent mitigation. I think for most supports right now, that's kind of, like, what you should be doing in the first place. So try to go your Prophetic. Or if you don't want to go Prophetic and you want to swap in Thebes instead, you can also just go Spirit Rope right after Thebes. And then also go Oni Hunter's Garb at some point in that build. And you're going to have your max percent mitigations and you're going to be pretty tanky croc. But... So big, I think, is still really good. He's been top tier for the last, like, couple seasons. I do think he's, like, not as good as he was. Like, before I had him on ban lists, I, I would say, okay, ban Sobek. But now, I don't really think you need to ban Sobek. These characters take precedence over him. Uh, but I still think he's a good support pick. Especially if you're in low elo, trying to climb out of low elo, uh, and, and you're stuck on the support role. Sobek's going to be one of, like, the best characters to do it with. And speaking of one of the best characters to do it with, Bacchus is another one. Bacchus I also thought was going to get kind of nerfed a little bit, but I played against a few boxes and also played him myself a little bit, and he uh, he feels really good. I thought he was going to be a little bit on the weaker end, but he feels strong. He feels very strong. He can still flop in there and be pretty tanky. Of course, not as tanky as he was prior to the patch, but he's still going to be really tanky. He's going to be one of your tankiest characters in the game. And he's still going to be able to output a lot of damage, right? Especially in the early game. Again, there's a lot more kill potential on the field now, especially in the early game. Bacchus has always been one of the best supports for getting pressure. In fact, probably the best support for getting pressure because he has two CC abilities level two. He, right, he's, he's got his flop and his burp. And of course, he's pretty safe. He's got damage mitigation passive. He gets free power in his kit off both his passive and his alt. He gets a lot of stuff. He gets a lot of stuff. And so he can kind of like do what he wants. So as long as you're, again, sort of building him like Sobek, right? You, you need to build other percent damage mitigation items as well. Prophetic, probably going to be good on him. Spirit Robe if they have a lot of CC. So when you flop in, you get CC'd. You're not going to really feel as much incoming damage. If you if you build correctly with him, he'll feel very strong even into the late game. Ardeo is one that's actually very interesting because I've, I've always liked Ardeo. I've always played Ardeo, especially in support. And I've always thought Ardeo was good. But Ardeo actually just recently got a couple buffs. One where she heals. And by the way, I'll, I'll be putting buffs and stuff like that up on the top right. So you guys can see just like I have in my other tier list videos. But Ardeo now pretty much got her one heal double. So before, if you guys aren't familiar with Ardeo's heal, whenever, in, whenever she was in druid form, her sort of like human form, whenever she won an enemy player, she would get HP. And it would also go to nearby, nearby allies that were around her. And that maxed out at 100. And it was per per enemy player that you hit. So up to 5. So pretty much up to 500 healing per hit. And so her 1 actually got doubled to 200 now. So theoretically, Ardeo can hit a 1k heal for her and her allies. It doesn't pop up as one big base number. But it's like, you know, a whole bunch of like mini like 200 numbers. But each player that she hits now will heal her and nearby allies for 200 each. Which is crazy to think about. So you have the potential to heal both you and nearby allies for a thousand HP, which is crazy to think about. On top of that, she also got cooldown reduction to her one, and she got increased healing on her three. 
So overall, I think the buffs gave her way more sustain. And on top of that, uh, I think like she's always been a good fighter. And I think she's a I think she's an even better fighter now with it. So I think Ardio is actually um, going to be good on the support list, especially especially if Ares is banned. A lot of people are banning Ares right now, right? Uh, as I talked about before, this character I think is very good uh, in support right now, and he just does a lot of damage. Ares does a lot of damage in support right now. He did damage before, and now his chains can, like, you can literally kill carries, like, at any point in the game. It's crazy. Um, but a lot of people want to ban Ares, and they'll pick characters, and ardio has got a massive cripple, too. She's got a six-second cripple field, right? She's pretty similar to Ares. Like, what's that going to do? Well, you're going to be able to screw over a lot of frontline and dive characters. So Ardio, I think, is very good. Try to give her a shot if you can. Um, I know people have a bit harder time playing her, but I think she's good. Kuzumbo. I'm not going to go too in-depth with Kuzumbo. I think Kuzumbo's fine right now. I, I would just play Kuzumbo mainly how you would play Bacchus and Sobek, mainly Bacchus, uh, when you're getting in there, build like you're playing Bacchus. Kuzumbo is also really easy to get procs on Prophetic Cloak, uh, and so you can get it with your turtle. I think before, I, I think that you can actually get it with your turtle just hitting somebody now too, which is crazy. Like before you had to smack somebody in the face with the turtle to get the stack. Now if you throw your turtle, even if it misses and the turtle goes up and hits a person, it'll give you a stack because of the whole like pet stacking stuff that they that they added uh, last patch so but besides that his two also is just really easy for giving him stacks so you can go thieves prophetic cloak on kuzumbo and you're going to be one tanky turtle next up we have sylvanas sylvanas i think is an awesome character um i actually haven't really enjoyed playing him in the past but he got some mini buffs made him a bit tankier and I do think he is worth playing at the very least. If you're hitting your pulse, if you're not hitting your pulse, don't touch this character. You're not going to have a good time with him. Uh, he doesn't have an escape. And again, since everybody's weaker and he doesn't have an escape, you're probably going to die more times than you would like. Uh, that's just kind of how the cookie crumbles. But he also has heavy lane pressure. He has high lane pressure. And he is a bit tankier than... Well, I guess he's not as tanky as he was slash patch technically, but like they increase his tanky stats, if that makes sense. So like he did get a bit of a buff uh, from that regard. But yeah, I, I would try him out. I think his sustain is really good right now. And I think he's just an overall like pretty solid character, pretty solid pick. Um, I would not rate him as high as these characters by any means, like these five right here. But I think he is worth trying. And again, if you're hitting the poles, like he's actually going to feel really, really good right now. So give him a try. Uh, Kepri and Ganesh, not really going to go too in depth. Everybody knows um, if you've watched these in the past that I love Kepri. I think he's going to be good every patch. This is my favorite character in the game. I think that this character just doesn't like there are characters that counter him, but I just don't think that he has a downside in the patch unless they heavily nerf his numbers. Ganesh kind of like has the Kepri effect in the sense that. Listen, everybody hates Ganesh because of his kit, and his kit's not really getting changed at all. Therefore, people are still going to keep hitting Ganesh. You know what I mean? Like, he's going to be good in most patches. Ganesh is just considered an anti dive support. Pretty much what that means is like, and you can also start fights with your alt. So, what that means obviously is, well, people that want to dive, Ganesh is going to help counter that, right? Your silence, your three, you have a lot of peel. Uh, so, I think Ganesh and Kepri are good characters. They're, they're solid. I put them here at the end of the support list because I don't think that they're necessarily like better than these characters. Um, I'd, I'd much rather, if you want to win games, probably play these characters. Unless you're really good with Kepri, go for it. Uh, but, like, these are kind of just here all the time. Like, they're they're always going to be good characters. All right, so ADC is my next one up. ADC got some really nice buffs. They got a lot of flat pens on a lot of different items and some buffs to, say, Stormseeker, for example. Asi got some flat pen as well. Um, so we're going to see a lot of the same ADCs that we saw last patch in, in the tier list. On her, Hachi, going to be good. Have been good for the last like season and a half two seasons um ever since hachi got his rework and ever since on her got passive attack speed these characters i think are still going to remain solid hachi i think has fallen a little bit lower on the list uh when it comes to adcs but still good regardless um can't go bad picking him on her feels especially strong right now because you can like literally blast somebody with your alt and just kill them um, of course like you need some more damage too not just your alt but like, you get a little bit of damage in there, right? Like an auto, two autos, whatever the case. Blast somebody with their ult, they're going to die. So on her, sort of like got a buff from that perspective. He's always been a good fighter, and he feels even better now. One character that actually made it back onto the list was Uller. So I liked Uller a couple patches ago, probably towards the beginning of the season. But then he fell out of favor because he just couldn't really kill people nearly as fast anymore. Some of his items got nerfed, so on and so forth. But now Uller does a lot of damage, right? Everybody does more damage. Uller in particular does a lot more damage, and you can one-shot off his combo, it feels like, again. And whenever you can one-shot off Uller combo, well, it's probably going to be, like, somewhat of an Uller meta. Next up, we have Scotty. 
I never really thought I'd put Scotty in a tier list, but here we are. Scotty's like a weird one. I've played against Scotty quite a bit actually the past like two weeks, even after this patch has happened. And she's she does a lot of damage. She's like a blue stone style hunter. Um, I guess you can build her attack speed if you want to, but from what I've seen, she's blue stone and she does a lot of damage. I would give her a try. I think her ice has been A's recently. I'm not exactly sure. Like colder now procs items i guess so she technically got a buff and i think that's why she's been picked up more why i've seen her more give her a try maybe you like her maybe you don't um it's up to you next up we have chernobog i think cherno is always going to be a good character uh for the most part whenever so like the thing with a lot of these like roles and classes especially some like adc is um whenever like you buff adc items most adcs are gonna like practically all the adcs are gonna get the buff right uh unless like you have a few that don't use the item here and there and like Chernobog, he just kind of falls under the ADC category. He doesn't really get as much pressure early, but I think his safety combined with his late game potential and his chase potential just make him good uh, and put him on the list, especially because now that more again, more flapping has been distributed towards ADC items. You're seeing a lot more Aussie builds instead of Devo's first builds. And Aussie allows you to fight earlier. It allows you to brawl more uh, because they they nerfed the power by like five, but they gave it flat end, which is really good. And Aussie just has insane stats. So I think like Chernobog just is in a better position than he was um, as with every ADC. But I just think he's a good character. And you're not going to get the most pressure early game, but I think your late game is going to be strong. And speaking of late game, Artemis. This is one character I think that has just sort of gone under the radar quite a bit. I think Artemis, when it comes to late game ADCs, is by far one of the best. She her, her one, like, sort of Achilles heel is that she is easy to get dove and also camped, uh, especially if you're not that good of an Artemis player and you're really susceptible to ganks. Like, if you're like me and just die to ganks all the time, <laughs> then you might not have a fun time with Artemis. But once you get past the laning phase, this character can hyper-carry a game late. Her alt is insane. Of course, being able to like chain stun people, the stun literally can't miss, especially if they're diving you. Uh, and then they can chain stun and completely ruin a fight for the enemy team. And then that combined with her passive, allowing her to do more damage to CC targets. And of course, her like root cripple, like so she has a lot of CC herself. Um, she is a really, really good like late game ADC, a good hyper carry late game ADC. Um, so I, I think she's been good actually for the last couple patches. And I think if you haven't already, try to give her a shot and see see how you like her. Heim uh, feels actually like pretty good. Um, I'm sort of biased towards Heim like I am towards Capria. I really like Heim as an ADC character. So I'm just going to throw that one out there. He's like my favorite. But I will say with all the flat pen and all, like the thing about Heim is that his autos hit harder than obviously other ADCs. And with all the flat pen and again, Aussie rushes and all this kind of stuff, like he just feels good, man. And his autos literally just chunk. Like they do so much damage right now. You don't even have to be full build. You could be four items in and you're hitting like crit, like old crit did uh, almost. So again, give him a shot. Uh, see if you like him or not, but I do think Haim is pretty strong. Only issue with characters like Haim and Chernobog is that they don't get pressure uh, against most ADCs. Like, Cherry might eat Haim alive, which is also why she's on this list, because she's just a super high-pressure ADC. Um, and, like, on her might be really good. Uh, Uller might, like, outpoke him, that kind of stuff. So, like, Scotty might be, like, really good into him. So, like, he, you know, he might not win most matchups, but I will say, like, once you get a couple items online, he's a fun character, and he still feels really good. Like, you're going to chunk, especially late game, too. Like, you will chunk the enemy tanks. You will chunk the enemy tanks. I was hitting, uh, like, late game tanks for 300, 350 in auto plus kins proc so maybe like over like 400 plus and then squishy does i hit for like maybe like a 450 500 base auto with like a smaller kins proc because they're squishy so he's still gonna feel really really good he's still gonna feel like he chunks so next up we have mids mids a little weird so i haven't played too much mid this patch but uh i've queued with a lot of mid players and i've seen like what a lot of people uh, like in mid what a lot of people have been playing what's been effective and so with mid actually ryzen feels very strong right now i think we might start getting back into a rise meta we'll see to be honest with you all the mids feel good oh well, okay that's a lie most of the mids feel good but Ryzen in particular i think has always had a little bit more early pressure than like other mids like he just has a lot of ability spam and his like late game is still really good too he will like one shot people so um Ryzen honestly hasn't been like really meta and what like a, a season season and a half like i've seen Ryzen pop up here and there uh, for like a couple weeks at a time and actually still be really good but i haven't really seen him pop off too much in the past like like two seasons so maybe we have a rise 
meta brewing upon us i'm not really sure but definitely try him out he's a f- super fun character too i mean like it you should just try him out for the hell of it because of how funny he is but uh, this character actually does just farm morgan lefay is another one that farms and she's gonna have a lot of damage and be able to one-shot people as well so uh, like i said most mages on this list can probably one-shot people but morgan lefay with all her cc combined with her damage has always felt like a really good character she has self peel so you don't have to like solely rely off support to peel especially if you don't you know know who your support is and also she has like a pretty long duration cc mute all i think it's like four or five seconds something like that and she's got decent range so uh give her a go as well one person i didn't think i'd be putting on this list would actually be changa for mid changa can well one shot <laughs> right now um but if you're gonna play changa i need to like emphasize this if you're gonna play changa please buy blink Changa is not like a tank killing character. She's, she's kind of like Giannis, right? Like you want to kill the back line. And how, well, how do you get to the back line? You blink. You blink to the back line. Do not go Aegis on Changa unless you're also going to go blink and Aegis at the same time. I would just go blink beats. Again, if you need Aegis, go blink Aegis. But please, 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 if you're going to play Changa, go blink. You late game, you will blink, alt, maybe get a poly auto in there. Then then like use your one three they'll be dead by that point anyways they'll be six feet under um so she actually feels like pretty damn good right now i know a few like really good mid laners that have been telling me that she's really good and to put her on the list so she's on the list next up we have agni agni's been good for the last like patch two patches um he just chunks he's gonna get to you in the chunk that's what agni does uh there's not much to it than that thoth is the same thing although thoth actually hasn't felt too too good uh, in the last couple patches, and by that I I don't mean like he's bad. He just has sort of fallen out of favor. I think a lot of people were playing Thoth at the beginning of the year, and they sort of started to stray away from him. Um, I don't think he was doing as much damage, but now his ult's going to one-shot people again, Um, if that was the case prior to the patch. So Thoth, an artillery-based mage just like Agni, they're both going to be able to do a lot of damage from safety, uh, from distance, which is always what's going to make these characters good. And Agni's going to have a tad bit more CC, I think, than Thoth does because of uh, how frequent his range stuns are. But both these characters are going to be able to do a shit ton of damage late game from safety, to put it simply. Zeus, I put Zeus in the last couple tier lists. I think Zeus is sort of that, that hidden gem pick. Even better now. Like, it, he was doing damage before. Oh, baby, he's doing damage now. He's doing damage now. Let me just tell you that much. Zeus does damage. We all know Zeus has done damage. He's going to be OP in Smite 2 because he can stun again. But, well, we're still in Smite 1. Zeus does damage. Uh, nothing else needs to be said. Poseidon is actually an interesting one. I didn't think... He, I was debating putting Poseidon up here, but I have played against Poseidon a couple times. I've also had a Poseidon on my team once or twice. And his damage, like, you know, off the Whirlpool combo feels very, very good because even if you're not killing somebody, you have that, like delayed cc from the whirlpool that's still going right after you crack and the whirlpool still going to be there for like another second or two and so it's easy cleanup but like all that damage and that like extra damage after the kraken just feels really good right now so uh maybe besides it maybe he's not it but i i have seen him be effective in my games and that is the number one thing that i do with these tier list is if a character is effective in my games uh, and I can see multiple people playing them and being effective with them, then I'm going to put them on the list because I'm going to think that they're good. Uh, and I do think Poseidon is, is in somewhat of a good spot right now. All right, next up we have Jungle. Notice how Jungle has the most characters on the list. Yes, Jungle's OP. Jungle will always be OP. All you junglers, stop complaining. First up, you have Mom and Bridget. You can always flex her to mid. Um, I think that she's mostly a jungle, though, at this point. She is just way more effective in the jungle. This character takes a little bit to get ramped up, but I will say that ramp up is so worth it. She does a lot of damage late game. She will literally one-shot squishies. Like, her ult alone will do, like, half, maybe three quarters of someone's HP late game. Of a squishy's HP late game. Let me squishy not tank squishy and then obviously you have the rest of her kit so i do think Mammon is is up there right now for jungles um dude hercules actually feels really good right now he well can one shot everybody can one shot the, the the theme of this list is everybody can one shot but he in particular has a lot of cc just kind of like nausea right in thor so like if you pluck somebody one somebody then alt them they're dead they're dead they're dead that's it they're dead unless they have beads so um being able to sort of do that consistently uh 
gives him sort of like, I think that leg up. Also him getting free power, of course. He's always gotten free power, but him getting free power from his passive allows him to do even more damage in the early game. And again, people are squishier. So like there's a lot more cases where you're just like able to kill people off of your sort of like combos and i think that's sort of like the theme again for some of these characters like naja thor and herc suki i talked about suki like last patch two patches ago um character i think is super good uh you have to be able to play this character if not you're gonna die a lot because again he doesn't have like an immediate escape but he does have like slows he does have movement speed boost and he does have a cc mute alt as well uh but he does so much damage dude suki has been doing damage for so long and now, I mean, he will poke and just kill you. He does so much damage. I've always thought Suki was a good character. I put him in my last couple tier list. I think he's insane. Um, you can even flex in mid, too. I've seen a couple players pull him off in mid and absolutely decimate with this character. So definitely try him out um, if you haven't already. But again, you have to be able to play him. If you can't play him, he's not going to be good. He's not going to feel good. And you're just going to end off cooldown. Thanatos. Needs no introduction. Thantos has always been good. He's going to be good. He's always going to be good unless they partner for his alt or do something to the numbers. Thantos just executes people. Gets early game pressure. He makes it hard for tanks to play late game because if tanks get poked a little bit too much, oh, God forbid, a tank has 40% HP left late game like they're just dead, right? Off execute. So it's going to be AIDS. Fenrir, I think, has come back a little bit as well. Um, I think that again because you're able to do so much more damage off cc like more cc oriented characters i think are just gonna be better and fenrir just kind of fits that style you jump on somebody you can literally just do half their health by jumping on them and like scratching them and then biting them and they're practically dead naja is the same thing with his kit if you alt somebody late game they're dead Hands down, they're just dead. But even if you don't get the alt off, they beat the alt, whatever the case, if you just hit the sash and then get an auto after the sash, you're just doing so much damage regardless. On top of that too, they also increased breastplate uh, of regrowth protections. So they made breastplate of regrowth pretty much a bit better, right? They increased its props by five. And I have seen a couple of Najas running around with this item and it does make him seem a lot better. He's tankier, uh, having that extra movement speed on top of speed buff because you're playing him in the jungle. All of that kind of stuff uh, just makes him feel a lot better. So, Naja, I think, is going to go on this list. Naja is still my most hated character in Smite, by the way. Like, I absolutely hate this character. If I didn't think he was good, I would absolutely never put him on, on this list. But um, he's on the list. Next up, Lance. Lance has been good for the past couple patches. That has not changed. If anything, he's gotten better because, oh, well, surprise, surprise, he won shots. But um, he did get, like, a little bit of a shield nerf, I believe. So he did get, like, a couple nerfs. Uh, two patches ago, like either last patch or two patches ago, but he uh, still does a ton of damage. He's fairly safe for the most part. I mean, nothing can take him off his horse unless you out damage the shield or unless you stun the horse. So he's like really good into characters like Athena and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, for the most part, he he just does a ton of damage and he's pretty safe with it too. Next up, we have Robin. Uh, Robin is just a good jungler in general in the sense that he just does damage he has a bit of safety with his two by the way i think his two is a little broken the high rates you guys gotta check that a little bit uh, that cc immunity i swear lasts like 0.5 seconds after the animation's done that's all i'm saying but he does have a little bit more um survivability when it comes to like an assassin's kit and he also just does more damage now again one shots off combo right can one shot off combo so feels good uh lastly we have daji now um, I actually, disclaimer, have not played against Daji. I know what I said earlier, this, these tier lists come from my experiences, but I've not played against Daji this patch. However, Daji is good in just about every patch, and I'm going to go out on a limb and say she's good in this patch as well, because Daji has always been able to do a significant amount of burst damage, offer two one Hydra's proc combos and whatnot, um, and she also can alt, giving her banishment like Kamazots and any character that has banishment is just going to feel really, really good. So while you're not getting hit for five or seven seconds, whatever it is, the enemies are getting hit in that time. That's why banishment is just so damn good. And Daji having that on her totem, also having a lot of CC, she's kind of like a mini Ares when it comes to that, right? Because she can chain people, pull them in, is always going to make her a good character. And she has a lot of burst with her one. She has a lot of burst with her one. So uh, I'm just going to say Daji's good. I haven't Again, disclaimer, haven't really played against her too much this patch, but I do think that she's good in just about every patch. So on top of those, of course, you have your banned Assassins, Kamazots, Bastet, and Thor, which I would probably pick over any of these. Um, Bastet, could go, you could go either way with Bastet. I mean, you could pick like you could pick like Thanatos and Naja, whatnot, over Bastet if you wanted to. Um, but I do think like 
But Camazots and Thor is just so damn good. Uh, if you if you want to win games, you pick Camazots and Thor. That's what you do. Next up, we have Soul Lane. Soul Lane, you actually have a bit more diversity than normal. So Mulan, I think, is actually really good right now. She was really good last patch. This patch, I'm still trying to feel out if she's like feels as strong, but she still feels strong. I've played against her a couple times. She does a ton of damage uh, for tank, and she's still super tanky. Uh, it depends on the builds that you're going to go, of course, but like her prods, her prop buffs that she got, uh, being able to now fire her alt, like the full animation of her alt without even touching an enemy. That's right. I said what I said. You can now fire her alt without completing the full animation. I believe that was like last patch, by the way. But if you didn't know that, now you do. So Mulan actually does feel super strong. She's a very strong soul laner again. She was strong, I believe, back in like season nine, maybe like maybe late season nine. I think she was strong and then she got like nerfed a bit. Uh, and then um, she hasn't really seen like too much playtime since, but since then now she's starting to come back up, started to come back up last patch, and now I think she's still like really good this patch. Wukong, no surprise there. This character's just been good for like flat out two years plus already. Um, he's kind of like Thor. He's just going to be good. Kakolin got some nice buffs last patch. He still feels good this patch, so that's why he's on here. Osiris. Um, Osiris actually feels really frustrating to fight against surprisingly i don't know why i say surprisingly but he like osiris is always going to be known as that sort of like tanky style character um so even when people aren't tanky osiris is still going to feel tanky if that makes sense um you can still definitely do like a lot more damage to him than you could before but he still feels really tanky and he's he does a lot of damage now especially with like frostbound procs and whatnot uh osiris does a ton of damage so like he'll kill you as a squishy or or the trade's gonna be extremely close so um, Osiris is is definitely going to be here on the list. Uh, and Bologna is the same way too. Bologna and Osiris, pretty much same thing with Bologna. I do think that Bologna has a little bit more like mobility when it comes to her kid a little bit. And like she's also still like really good against ADCs because of her three and her one. But at the same time, um, both these characters, I don't think you can go wrong with either or. They both do sort of like similar things when it comes to like auto attacking, auto attack based stuff. And uh, they both feel really tanky and, and can abuse auto attack items to do a lot of damage. Uh, no, next up is actually Nike. So Nike, I wouldn't put on this list if I hadn't seen like a few different Nikes just perform really, really well in my games. I would have never thought this, but Nike actually does a lot of damage. And with her sort of shield, she just gets like all that extra, I guess, HP, right? Um, Technically, she did get nerfed because the HP is based off her percent HP. So technically like the ult got nerfed a little bit but she still feels really strong really tanky and she just has like the thing about nike is she's just always had aoe damage meaning that she's sort of like just a lot easier to hit stuff with right like you're not really missing nike abilities like you can here and there but like you're not really you're always going to get the expected damage off essentially and that's why i think is really good about her especially now is that like she does a decent amount of damage and you just kind of know you're going to get it off unlike someone like say herc for example where you can easily miss combos uh you can miss your one you can miss your two shit you can even miss the ult uh <laughs> so like nike is not really like that though she's kind of like the opposite of that and while still being able to do like a ton of damage next up is shiva um shiva is another character again Similar to Nike in the sense that I haven't, I didn't really think I would put Shiva on here, but I've seen a few different people play Shiva, and this character does a shit ton of damage. Like his, um, his two can take like a third of a Squishy's HP bar out, uh, late game, and it's really aggravating to go against Shiva too because of the way his CC is. Like he doesn't really have good lockdown, but he has really good disruption, right? Like he, he has a pull in, he has a knock up, a mini knock up, and some in some cases mini knock ups are more annoying than big knock ups. I don't know why, but they just are. So he has a lot of disruption, and with that disruption, he also has a lot of damage, and um, he can make your health bar go away in the snap of a finger if you're not careful. And on top of that, he he's a he's a tank right like he's a pretty i wouldn't say he's like a safe tank per se but like his dash is really good his ult a like super long cc immune duration ult so i've seen shiva perform and i do think that he's really frustrating the fight against right now he does do like a lot of damage randomly and try him out vamana you guys already know about vamana me and vamana i think vamana's just gonna remain good for a really really long time um unless they like significantly like just do some change to his kit or whatever the case but i still think vamana is good if you can play him well him being unpeelable while he's still able to do a lot of damage again with a base alt of like five seconds even if you're not doing damage to him like he's gonna kill your carries in within five seconds he's gonna kill somebody within five seconds if you're not hitting him still so 
Uh, yeah, th this character is just AIDS. He's always been AIDS, and he's going to remain AIDS. That's what Vimana is. But in any case, so that is going to be the tier list. So the characters that I have not put on this tier list are not bad by any means, by the way. Like, I think Atlas is probably really good. Athena is obviously still really good. But I, I don't want to put everything on this tier list. Like, the, the tier lists are mostly meant for what do I think are super top bands right now, and then what do I think are sort of like the best at their role. And so far, I think like these characters are sort of the best at their role with a few exceptions here and there. But yeah, for example, like Oleron, I, I think he's pretty decent. Like, I don't think he's as good as physical ADCs right now. I think physical ADCs are really good after this patch. But last patch, I thought Oleron was a top ADC. Now I think he's kind of shifted downwards because of the, the item spikes. But I still think he's probably pretty good. I think Ymir is good. I had a really good Ymir game the other day. It just depends on the situation. Uh, Hell got some buffs too. So like healing, I think, being a bit better now because like sustain is should just be really good with everybody being weaker. You want more sustain on your team. Uh, so having like Emoja Hell could also be good. So, you know, and uh, I've also played like Cerberus. I think he's decent. So these characters aren't necessarily like bad, but I just wouldn't rate them as high as the ones that I rated on this list. That's all that means. So you could definitely still play all these characters and have a phenomenal time with them, Susano included, right? Uh, maybe I should have put Susano on this list. <laughs> but yeah, in fact, I think I will put him here. Um, but like all these characters, I think are still like really, really good. But in any case, guys, that's the tier list. Again, thank you all so much for watching. I appreciate it. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please feel free to comment in the comment section down below and I'll try to address them. If you guys have any questions about any of these characters that I might not have covered or like a further explanation of why I put who where, so on and so forth. But thank you guys again. I appreciate it and see you in the next video.